Welcome to Living Life. It is wonderful to be with you in this time of enjoying God's presence through His Word. So let's begin. The word pride passed through my mind when I was reading today's passage. Pride is a sin that sneaks in so quietly and so unnoticeably that I'm sometimes surprised when I discover that it's in me. And so many other people that I know share with me the same experience and they resonate with me. No wonder Benjamin Franklin, a leading writer, scientist, statesman, and the founding father of the United States, left this famous saying, there is perhaps not one of our natural passions so hard to subdue as pride. Disguise it, struggle with it, stifle it, mortify it as much as one pleases, it is still alive and will every now and then peep out and show itself. In today's passage, Amaziah, king of Judah, although he did partially what was right in the eyes of God, faced a downfall when he became proud. Let's take a look at today's passage. Second Kings 14, 1 to 16. In the second year of Jehosh, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, son of Josh, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoadon. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father David had done. In everything he followed the example of his father Josh. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. After the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Yet he did not put the children of the assassins to death. In accordance with what this written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. He was the one who defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and captured Selah in battle, calling it Jokthil, the name it has to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehosh, son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, with the challenge, Come. Let us face each other in battle. But Jehosh, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah, A thistle in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon. Give your daughter to my son in marriage. Then a wild beast in Lebanon came along and trampled the thistle underfoot. You have indeed defeated Edom, and now you are arrogant. Glory in your victory, but stay at home. Why ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? Amaziah, however, would not listen, so Jehosh, king of Israel, attacked. He and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced each other at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was rooted by Israel, and every man fled to his home. Jehosh, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Josh, the son of Aziah, at Beth Shemesh. Then Jehosh went to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the Ephraim gate to corner gates a section about 400 cubits long. He took all the gold and silver and all the articles found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasures of the royal palace. He also took hostages and returned to Samaria. As for the other events of the reign of Jehosh, what he did and his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the king of Israel? Jehosh rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, and Jeroboam, his son, succeeded him as king. What is pride? Pride is not knowing one's position before God. When a person is prideful, other people recognize it first, especially the ones that are closest to them. When do we know when a person is prideful? When can we recognize when we are prideful? 
We know that a person is prideful when they don't recognize that their success was because of God's grace and all the people and the team who contributed to it. We know that a person is prideful when they take credit for themselves. We know that they're prideful when they are blinded about their weaknesses. We know it when they dwell in their success and belittle others in order to feel that they are above them. In today's passage, verse 7 chose the word nasa in Hebrew to describe pride. Nasa means to lift up, to lift it high. It refers to one's heart attitude of looking down on others. And I'm sure that there are other kinds of signs as well. By the way, what makes us prideful? Come to think of it, Satan, the one who opposes God, became proud and fell from heaven. Isaiah 14 describes Satan in these terms. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the star of, of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. No wonder God deals so harshly with pride. We see in the Bible so many stories of people or nations falling when they have become proud. When King Nebuchadnezzar did not take seriously Daniel's interpretation of his dreams that his kingship will not last, and when he did not listen to him when he told him to repent and to start living righteously, but instead kept declaring how Babylon was still prosperous, he saw his own downfall. He now lived among the beasts in the wilderness. Some commentators believe that he became insane and imitated the behaviors of the animals. Nimrod and the builders of Tower of Babel were not able to finish their make our names known project, but were scattered by God's hands. God confused their languages and they could not communicate with each other anymore. We see what happened when Solomon became proud, Samson, Saul, and the list goes on. Proverbs sixteen eighteen says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. A little seed of pride can enter into our hearts right after we had a major success. And before we know it, it has grown to be like a large tree, spreading its roots and branches like King Amaziah did in today's passage. Verse 5 says, After the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Now Amaziah's kingship was firmly established. He got rid of all his father's opponents, Still, who took care of another issue. The Edomites had been under the rule of Judah, but they rebelled against them later. Verse 7 says, He defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and captured Selah in battle. Yet Amaziah made a big mistake of not getting rid of all the idols. Instead, he brought in more idols from Edom. Amaziah must have felt proud that he had some major accomplishments. And instead of acknowledging God for giving him such a victory, he took the credit for himself. So we need to be watchful when we just had a major victory or a series of success. Or pride can also sneak in after many defeats and we finally had a little accomplishment. We may want to highlight the success so we can make up for the loss or defeat. So this is another time we need to be careful. King Amaziah now was facing another big issue. The Israel's military had been brought in as mercenaries by Judah in order to rout the Edomites, but they were not included in their fight against the Edomites and were sent back. And they became angry. When they were sent back, Israel destroyed the towns of Judah, plundering their homes and properties, 
resulting in a great massacre of innocent people. For vengeance, King Amaziah sent a message to Israel, let us meet and battle. He had a good reason to attack Israel, yet King Amaziah approached them with pride, thinking that he would be able to drive them out easily by his own might. Yes, he had wiped out his father's enemies, subdued Edom, but these were all made possible by the mercy of God, who did not want to cut off his own people and to blot out their names permanently. Not recognizing who fought for them and brought them victory, Amaziah trusted his own army and challenged Israel directly. And the people of Judah were shamefully defeated, the temple utterly destroyed. Of course, none of us want to follow the footsteps of Amaziah. T.S. Eliot, a famous American poet and playwright of the 20th century said, half of the harm that is done in this world is due to people who want to feel important. And don't we see the destruction of humanity that some people have created even today because they want to feel so important? So how should we deal with pride? What could be some antidotes? I see myself more quickly noticing pride when it so quietly sneaks in if I remain in the Word of God. Especially keeping to read Proverbs and Psalms has been helpful. Also recognizing God's grace by reflecting on my day or by journaling or sharing with family or friends is also helpful. Daily thanking God for what He has done not only keeps us from becoming proud, but also restores joy in our hearts. Let us pray. God of mercy and humility, you came down to the earth and into our hearts where we did not have an adequate space for you simply because you love us and want us to be part of your family. We want to learn from how you lived on this earth and how you showed us through many biblical and contemporary examples. Please daily remind us of your grace and how you're working in and through us. So we may not face a downfall, but see ourselves walking in the path of life and fruitfulness according to your perspectives. We pray this in the gracious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.